The Deep Paint plugin is a new creation by Gaku, and I was so excited to see this because as soon as I was looking into the tutorials, I knew I could apply this to topography, but I wasn't sure how. So I came up with a stepwise process that will take us from a DEM, a digital elevation model, to a finalized product that could be used for a host of purposes. I'm excited to use this plugin to animate and accentuate geospatial analyses. I'm filming here specifically because this is not the full scope, so I'm going to zoom in on this. But this is a picture of San Francisco that hangs right next to my desk in my office. The subject matter of our tutorial is going to be San Francisco. I'm going to be building a story map of sorts that's going to walk through some landmarks that are really special to me and remind me of so many different moments of living in San Francisco. This is going to take you through just a little bit of modeling. We're not going to touch on that much. Mostly what we're going to be doing is making sure that you understand how to start from a DEM, a 2D image, and then extrude it such that you're able to have this landscape that then can be stylized with this plugin and is going to end up as this dreamy animated style that I am so in love with. Let's get started by accessing the Deep Paint plugin. I just looked up Gumroad Deep Paint Blender, but I originally found it by going onto the Gaku Tada dot com website. Gaku Tara is a visual artist, illustrator, and software engineer who has created several plugins on Blender. So I'm just going to go into the Deep Paint Blender 3D model paint and tool set. We're going to purchase the pro version to access all of the features that you want. I've already purchased this, but once you purchase this, it's going to download itself as a composite of different files. And what you're going to want to do is zip these so you can simply select all of them. And I'm using a Mac, but I'm going to go say compress. And now I have my zip, which I'm going to rename deep paint plugin. And then we can go on to Blender and we're going to go into edit preferences and add-ons. Click install in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to navigate to where I saved it. So then here's my zip and I'm going to say install add-on. Because I already have this, I'm just going to look up deep paint and select it. I can close out from there. And where you will find it is if you navigate to the right side, you can pull out that small triangle and it is labeled deep. So I can see that I have all my features here and we're gonna get started by making a plane. So I'm going to get into object mode, select add mesh plane. I have opened my DEM. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using the DEM that I have procured using a software called Fused. And it's fairly simple to get a DEM online, but they're not always high resolution. And you want it to be high resolution so that you can get all those curves very smooth. Because if you think about a 30 by 30 meter DEM, which is what you might find for maybe a global set, you are going to be working with pixels that are not going to allow for a really smooth rendering. And they're going to look more like blocks. So this was the best DEM that I could find that was also mid-size because there's plenty of really high res DEMs of San Francisco. but the problem with that is that you're going to be suffering from a lag on your computer. It's kind of a Goldilocks principle of finding something in the middle so that you don't slow down rendering time depending on your goals and you still get a really crisp image. You can find this on my website and I've posted it in the comments. If you navigate there and click, you're going to be able to download this high resolution DEM and use this for our practice. If you'd like to work on a different DEM of a different landmass, you can simply look up the landmass of interest and say digital elevation model after and navigate through perhaps the NASA website or Earth Observatory so you can see if that is available. In this step, we're going to scale and subdivide on that mesh we just created. We're going to do that by looking first at this DEM that we have and looking at the dimensions and I can see here that it's 2,888 by 1,000. 
839 pixels. And how I like to translate this is I go and scale my mesh. On the left side, you can start to scale it according to those ratios. And I simply type in the same ratio. And you can see here that instead of in the thousands, it is 1.839. And from there, you're going to have a mesh that's the same size as your DEM. We're going to subdivide it. And you do this by first going from object mode to edit mode and then pressing command E. And then you'll find subdivide by 100. I think that this could use another subdivision for a really smooth surface. So I'm going to subdivide it again. And we can see here that we have a pretty fine mesh. So that is going to work for our needs. Next, I'll navigate to the shading tab and create a new material using the principal BSDF shader. I will add an image texture and select the desired image as my texture, which is my DEM. I will connect this to the base color, which will project the flat image onto the plane. After that, I'm going to go into modifiers located on the right side of the screen and I'm going to add a displacement modifier. Then I'll toggle to use the TIFF file, our DEM, as the displacement image. You can adjust the strength. And I see here that it's a little too high at first, so I'm going to set it to 0.4. This displacement might look exaggerated, but I'm keeping it this way for storytelling purposes as we want it to look animated and immersive. Next, I'll add a subdivision modifier because the model isn't entirely smooth. This subdivision surface allows me to smooth out the geometry. I recommend keeping the subdivision level between 2 and 3 while editing, depending on your machine's capabilities and GPU. For instance, I have a pretty new Mac as of last year with an M3 chip, and I mention this because I purchased it expecting it to improve render times, which it has, but I still experience noticeable lag when I'm using more than three subdivision services. So you can actually disable the subdivision as well while you're editing by clicking on the screen instead of the camera while you're working with a modifier. So we've made it to the next step where we're going to navigate to our deep plugin. We're going to find that on again the right side and click on deep. How we change the surface into this beautiful canvas is we click on DPM to make this into a DPM surface. So you can see this transforms our digital elevation model into a canvas. So we can see that when we click on viewport shading in the upper right hand corner, we are experiencing complete shade. And so to fix this, we're going to click on our global settings on our deep extension and click on DP sunlight. And this is going to illuminate the set. Now we're going to get to painting and I'm going to switch back in my viewport shading into the material preview mode which is that partially shaded circle at the very top right corner. Click on vertex paint and we're gonna choose a green color to be coloring the mountains. And for now, I'm not gonna worry too much about being precise. I'm just walking you through the coloring step. So now I've skipped ahead to show you how you can add a reference image and this will be helpful if you're coloring a landscape you will click on add image reference and you'll choose from an image that you might want to download onto your computer so that you can look at it while you color press g the letter g on your keyboard to move this around so that it's in an ideal position for you to be looking at your scenery. And don't worry, we're going to touch on how I got this shading in just a minute. 
And I'm sure you noticed when we started to paint the mountains, that was a hexagonal, weirdly glassy looking paint job. And that's because of the grain size. So to fix that, we're going to go into our shading tab and we're going to turn up our grain scale. I turned mine up to 433. You can turn yours up even higher, but this is just to get across that the grain scale is the factor that is making that sort of glassy look. And next we're going to make an outline for this picturesque grease paint style. To do that, we're going to look at our deep tool set and select outline and the initial outline that I got was huge and so I adjusted as needed and brought down those values until I had something like 0 0.005 on that outline value. Now we're going to scroll down into our global settings. This is where we can adjust our world color and our light and I want a blue sky so I'm going to go into my viewport rendered mode which is that fourth circle at the top of your viewport shading and I'm going to make my sky blue by just playing around on the palette until I'm happy with the color. As you can see here, I've finished my paint job and now I'm in the modeling mode. I'm going to switch back to my preview mode and we can see that this is a kind of crude job, but I like it. What I'm going to do to make the ocean is I made a large plane. So I went into add mesh and I added a plane and I just made it big enough so that the horizon line isn't super visible when I'm going to be panning out on my camera. And as you can see, it's just in the normal material that it starts out in. So I'm going to switch it into a DPM material. And from there, I am going to adjust the color and grain size so that it corresponds with the grain and color of the ocean. And to make my ocean blend in, I'm going to select it. I'm going to press G. And a shortcut is you do G and then you press the letter key Z and you can toggle that up and down. For now I'm going to adjust those values by clicking little by little until I see that the C level has been filled. So now that my painting and my environment have been finished I'm gonna go and find some of the assets and build some of them as well but I wanted to let you guys know that this Golden Gate Bridge I have featured in this landscape model is something that I found on TurboSquid and I've provided the link in the comments. So I simply upload that into my model and I'm gonna play around with it by sizing it and of course painting it, which I can do by selecting the mesh and doing the same set of steps, select vertex paint and go about painting that. I wanted to add a little bit more grain, a little bit more rust, and just some other details so it didn't look starkly different from the rest of the image. As I mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial, the goal here is for you to have a finalized topographic model. And for that reason, I'm only going to add a peek into how I modeled some of these buildings. They're very simple. I've also provided some in the comments, including where you can find pre-made models such as on TurboSquid. For my final render, I decided to include Alcatraz, which reminds me of the time that I swam from Alcatraz. That was a gnarly race. Of course, I had to add the Golden Gate Bridge as it's the pinnacle of San Francisco. I also added the Conservatory of Flowers, which is one of my favorite places in Golden Gate Park. And lastly, I added the Transamerica Building and Coit Tower because of their semblance of the memories when I first moved to San Francisco and how much they stood out as being pinnacles I had seen of San Francisco. So let me know what you thought of this tutorial, what problems you've run into, if any, and I would love to see all the final projects, so feel free to post links in the comments.